I don't have time left on the DVD for a lot of poetry talk, so I'm just going to read a couple of poems. This one is Remembering Grandpa. I remember my grandfather sitting still as dawn in the prow of his old boat, a straw hat pulled low over his eyes, a wad of Garrett snuff buried under his lips. Clutching his fishing rod with the kind of patience a kid like me found hard to come by. Once, fishing Kentucky Lake near Hog Hollow, we didn't heed the coming clouds until it was almost too late. The whitecaps breaking over the sides of the small boat, the little engine chugging. We made a run for a small island, sitting green and blowing rain in the middle of the sprawl of rolling muddy water. An old man and woman, neither of whom could swim a lake, and a 12-year-old boy who could, but not that far. The boat dragged up on the sandy bank. We found partial shelter under a clump of heavy undergrowth, hunkered down there, drawn up against the crack of lightning and the howl of wind and rain coming across the earth sideways. I remember my grandmother's old blue eyes and how they twinkled with excitement because Granny wasn't afraid of it anything, even the devil armed with a circle saw. The storm passed as storms do and soon we were on our way chugging across toss water to the pump house where the dike split the backwater and big catfish lurked among the rocks. Near the edge where the suction pulled through inside the concrete building, a maelstrom of churning water filled with wide bellies of dead shed and the roar of big engines moving water unnaturally uphill and across the tongue of Green Bank. I think now that I am older than my grandfather was that day and I have not yet come close to drowning one of my grandchildren and what they have missed because of that and what I have missed because of the miles and time between us. My grandchildren will, will remember me as a vague stranger they saw on rare occasions, an old man who wrote things and smoked too much and sometimes laughed too hard, loud when he drank too much, and rarely showed them how to do this or that or the other. I remember my grandfather as a short squat man with a straw hat in the boat with his beloved fishing tackle, and sometimes, if the melancholy comes, I recall his last minutes lying in a hospital bed, his face twisted by the ravages of a stroke, and how he gripped my hand just minutes before he died and tried to say, it's all right, son, with his paralyzed lips. And a few minutes later, the doctor came out weeping and said, he's gone. A couple of days later in the graveyard, I could almost hear the old man whisper, don't talk, son, the fish will hear you. This poem is called Old Couple at the Coffee Shop. I see the same old couple every time I go to the coffee shop. The old lady with a face like saddlebags left on a nag too long in the sun and rain. Reminds me of an ex-mother-in-law who might have been seen in an eastern Oki bar during the big war. Clad in khaki, khakis touched by the bite of welding sparks, drinking a slit straight the long neck. Puffing a lucky, telling some rounder to go get fucked in no uncertain terms. Like she told me years later during times of relative peace. The old man with the old lady at the coffee shop just looks unhappy, like his big feet can't find a place to rest on the table. They'd rather be walking those fields on the other side. I don't know why, but something about these old folks touches me in a deep place in a way I don't relish, and I wonder if I will end up like this. And I think to check my ammo when I return home.